The Arabic alphabet Arabic, al 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 or al huruf al al huruf al or Arabic abjad is the Arabic script as it is codified for writing Arabic. It is written from right to left in a cursive style and includes 28 letters. Most letters have contextual letter forms. Originally, the alphabet was an abjad, with only consonants, but it is now considered an impure abjad. As with other abjads, such as the Hebrew alphabet, scribes later devised means of indicating vowel sounds by separate vowel diacritics. Consonants The basic Arabic alphabet contains 28 letters. Adaptations of the Arabic script for other languages added and removed some letters, as for Persian, Ottoman Turkish, Kurdish, Urdu, Sindhi, Malay, Pashto, Arwi and Malayalam all of which have additional letters as shown below. There are no distinct upper and lower case letter forms. Many letters look similar but are distinguished from one another by dots above or below their central part these dots are an integral part of a letter, since they distinguish between letters that represent different sounds. For example, the Arabic letters b, b t, t, and th, th have the same basic shape, but have one dot below, two dots above, and three dots above. The letter n, n also has the same form in initial and medial forms, with one dot above, though it is somewhat different in isolated and final form. Both printed and written Arabic are cursive, with most of the letters within a word directly connected to the adjacent letters. <laughs> <laughs> Alphabetical order There are two main collating sequences for the Arabic alphabet, abjad and iha. The original abjadi order, abjadi used for lettering, derives from the order of the Phoenician alphabet, and is therefore similar to the order of other Phoenician-derived alphabets, such as the Hebrew alphabet. In this order, letters are also used as numbers, abjad numerals, and possess the same alphanumeric code, cipher as Hebrew gematria and Greek isosifi. The ihai or alab order, used where lists of names and words are sorted, as in phonebooks, classroom lists, and dictionaries, groups letters by similarity of shape. Abjadi The Abjadi order is not a simple historical continuation of the earlier North Semitic alphabetic order, since it has a position corresponding to the Aramaic letter Samek, Semkad S, yet no letter of the Arabic alphabet historically derives from that letter. Loss of Samek was compensated for by the split of Shin S into two independent Arabic letters, Shish Shin and S Sin, which moved up to take the place of Samek. The six other letters that do not correspond to any North Semitic letter are placed at the end. This is commonly vocalized as follows Abjad Hawaz Hudi Kalaman Sa Fas Karashat Thaka Daza. Another vocalization is Abujadan Hawazan Hudiya Kalman Sa Fas Karashat Thakhud Daz. This can be vocalized as Abujadan Hawazan Hudiya Kalman Sa Fad Kwarazat Thakhud Zagish. HIJ Modern dictionaries and other reference books do not use the abjadi order to sort alphabetically, instead, the newer hij order is used wherein letters are partially grouped together by similarity of shape. The hij order is never used as numerals. Another kind of hij order was used widely in the Maghreb until recently when it was replaced by the Mashriqi order. Letter forms. The Arabic alphabet is always cursive and letters vary in shape depending on their position within a word. Letters can exhibit up to four distinct forms corresponding to an initial, medial, middle, final, or isolated position While some letters show considerable variations, others remain almost identical across all four positions. Generally, letters in the same word are linked together on both sides by short horizontal lines, but six letters, W, Z, R, D, H, D, A can only be linked to their preceding letter. For example, Ararat Ararat has only isolated forms because each letter cannot be connected to its following one. 
In addition, some letter combinations are written as ligatures special shapes, notably lam aleph le, which is the only mandatory ligature the unligated combination la is considered difficult to read. <laughs> Table of basic letters Notes See the article Romanization of Arabic for details on various transliteration schemes, however, Arabic language speakers may usually not follow a standardized scheme when transcribing names. Also names are regularly transcribed as pronounced locally, not as pronounced in literary Arabic if they were of Arabic origin. Regarding pronunciation, the phonemic values given are those of modern standard Arabic, which is taught in schools and universities. In practice, pronunciation may vary considerably from region to region. For more details concerning the pronunciation of Arabic, consult the articles Arabic phonology and varieties of Arabic. The names of the Arabic letters can be thought of as abstractions of an older version where they were meaningful words in the Proto-Semitic language. Names of Arabic letters may have quite different names popularly. Six letters w, z, r, d, h, d, a, do not have a distinct medial form and have to be written with their final form without being connected to the next letter. Their initial form matches the isolated form. The following letter is written in its initial form, or isolated form if it is the final letter in the word. The letter Aleph originated in the Phoenician alphabet as a consonant sign indicating a glottal stop. Today it has lost its function as a consonant, and, together with ya and wa, is a moder lectionis, a consonant sign standing in for a long vowel see below, or as support for certain diacritics mada and hamza. Arabic currently uses a diacritic sign, called hamza, to denote the glottal stop, written alone or with a carrier, alone. With a carrier, a a above or under a aleph, w above a wa, y above a dotless ya or ya hamza. In academic work, the hamza is transliterated with the modifier letter right half ring, while the modifier letter left half ring transliterates the letter ein, which represents a different sound, not found in English. The hamza has a single form, since it is never linked to a preceding or following letter. However, it is sometimes combined with a wa, ya, or aleph, and in that case the carrier behaves like an ordinary wa, ya, or aleph. Aleph Modified letters The following are not individual letters, but rather different contextual variants of some of the Arabic letters. Topic: <inaudible> Ligatures. The use of ligature in Arabic is common. There is one compulsory ligature, that for lam plus aleph, which exists in two forms. All other ligatures, ya plus mim, etc., are optional. A more complex ligature that combines as many as seven distinct components is commonly used to represent the word Allah. The only ligature within the primary range of Arabic script in Unicode U XX is Lam plus Aleph. This is the only one compulsory for fonts and word processing. Other ranges are for compatibility to older standards and contain other ligatures, which are optional. Lam plus Aleph La note, Unicode also has in its presentation form BFEXX range a code for this ligature. If your browser and font are configured correctly for Arabic, the ligature displayed above should be identical to this one, U plus Feb Arabic ligature LAM with Aleph isolated form. La U plus 0640 Arabic Tatwil plus LAM plus Aleph La note, Unicode also has in its presentation form BU plus FEX range a code for this ligature. If your browser and font are configured correctly for Arabic, the ligature displayed above should be identical to this one. U plus FEFC Arabic ligature LAM with Aleph final form LA another ligature in the Unicode presentation form A range U plus FB50 to U plus FDXX is the special code for glyph for the ligature Allah. God. U plus FDF2 Arabic ligature Allah isolated form. All this is a workaround for the shortcomings of most text processors, which are incapable of displaying the correct vowel marks for the word Allah in Quran. 
Because Arabic script is used to write other texts rather than Quran only, rendering lam plus lam plus ha as the previous ligature is considered faulty. If one of a number of fonts Noto Nask Arabic, MRY underscore Kaxtkirn, Kaxtone, Deja Vu Sans, Harmatan, Shaharazad, Latif, Iranian Sans is installed on a computer, Iranian Sans is supported by Wikimedia web fonts, the word will appear without diacritics. Lam plus lam plus ha equals lila meaning to Allah only to Allah er Alif plus lam plus lam plus ha equals Allah the Islamic name for God All or all Alif plus lam plus lam plus u plus o six five one Arabic shada plus u plus o six seven o Arabic letter superscript Alif plus ha all deja vu sans and caxtone don't show the added superscript alif an attempt to show them on the faulty fonts without automatically adding the gemination mark and the superscript alif, although may not display as desired on all browsers, is by adding the u plus 200d zero width joiner after the first or second lamb alif plus lamb plus lamb plus u plus 200d zero width joiner plus ha all. Topic. Gemination. Gemination is the doubling of a consonant. Instead of writing the letter twice, Arabic places a W-shaped sign called shada, above it. Note that if a vowel occurs between the two consonants the letter will simply be written twice. The diacritic only appears where the consonant at the end of one syllable is identical to the initial consonant of the following syllable. The generic term for such diacritical signs is harakat. Nunation Nunation is the addition of a final n to a noun or adjective. The vowel before it indicates grammatical case. In written Arabic nunation is indicated by doubling the vowel diacritic at the end of the word. Vowels Users of Arabic usually write long vowels but omit short ones, so readers must utilize their knowledge of the language in order to supply the missing vowels. However, in the education system and particularly in classes on Arabic grammar these vowels are used since they are crucial to the grammar. An Arabic sentence can have a completely different meaning by a subtle change of the vowels. This is why in an important text such as the Quran the three basic vowel signs see below are mandated, like the harakat and all the other diacritics or other types of marks, for example the cantillation signs. <laughs> Short vowels In the Arabic handwriting of everyday use, in general publications, and on street signs, short vowels are typically not written. On the other hand, copies of the Quran cannot be endorsed by the religious institutes that review them unless the diacritics are included. Children's books, elementary school texts, and Arabic language grammars in general will include diacritics to some degree. These are known as vocalized texts. Short vowels may be written with diacritics placed above or below the consonant that precedes them in the syllable, called harakat. All Arabic vowels, long and short, follow a consonant. In Arabic, words like Ali or Aleph, for example, start with a consonant, Ali, Aleph. <laughs> long vowels In the fully vocalized Arabic text found in texts such as Quran, a longa following a consonant other than a hamza is written with a short a sign on the consonant plus an aleph after it, long i is written as a sign for short i plus a y, and long u as a sign for short u plus a wa. Briefly, a a y i, and w equals u. Long a following a hamza may be represented by an alif mada or by a free hamza followed by an alif. Two consecutive alifs are never allowed in Arabic. The table below shows vowels placed above or below a dotted circle replacing a primary consonant letter or a shada sign. For clarity in the table, the primary letters on the left used to mark these long vowels are shown only in their isolated form. Please note that most consonants do connect to the left with alif, wa, and y written then with their medial or final form. 
Additionally, the letter Y in the last row may connect to the letter on its left, and then will use a medial or initial form. Use the table of primary letters to look at their actual glyph and joining types. In unvocalized text, one in which the short vowels are not marked. The long vowels are represented by the vowel in question, alif tawila, maxura, wa, or y. Long vowels written in the middle of a word of unvocalized text are treated like consonants with a sukun see below in a text that has full diacritics. Here also, the table shows long vowel letters only in isolated form for clarity. Combinations wa and ya are always pronounced wa and y respectively. The exception is the suffix wa in verb endings where alif is silent, resulting in u or a. In addition, when transliterating names and loanwords, Arabic language speakers write out most or all the vowels as long a with a alif, e and i with y ya, and o and u with w wa, meaning it approaches a true alphabet. Diphthongs <inaudible> 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 The diphthongs, a, j, and, a, are represented in vocalized text as follows. Vowel omission An Arabic syllable can be open ending with a vowel or closed ending with a consonant open, cv consonant vowel long or short vowel Closed, CVC short vowel only a normal text is composed only of a series of consonants plus vowel lengthening letters, thus, the word qalb heart, is written qlb, and the word qualab he turned around, is also written qlb. To write qualab without this ambiguity, we could indicate that the l is followed by a shorta by writing a fatha above it. To write qalb, we would instead indicate that the l is followed by no vowel by marking it with a diacritic called sukun, like this. Q this is one step down from full vocalization, where the vowel after the q would also be indicated by a fatha. Q the qurn is traditionally written in full vocalization. The long i sound in some editions of the Quran is written with a kasra followed by a diacritic less y, and long u by a dama followed by a bare w. In others, these Y and W carry a sukun. Outside of the Quran, the latter convention is extremely rare, to the point that Y with sukun will be unambiguously read as the diphthong, A J, and W with sukun will be read, A. Ah. For example, the letters M Y L can be read like English meal or male, or theoretically also like mile or mile. But if a sukun is added on the Y then the M cannot have a sukun because two letters in a row cannot be sukunated, cannot have a dama because there is never an UY sound in Arabic unless there is another vowel after the Y, and cannot have a kasra because kasra before sukunated Y is never found outside the Quran, so it must have a fatha and the only possible pronunciation is, majl, meaning mile, or even email. By the same token, myt with a sukun over the y can be mate but not myat or meat, and mwt with a sukun on the w can only be mot, not moot iw is impossible when the w closes the syllable. Vowel marks are always written as if the irab vowels were in fact pronounced, even when they must be skipped in actual pronunciation. So, when writing the name Ahmad, it is optional to place a sukun on the H, but a sukun is forbidden on the D, because it would carry a dama if any other word followed, as in Ahmadu Zawji, Ahmad is my husband. Another example, the sentence that in correct literary Arabic must be pronounced Ahmadu Zajan Sharir, Ahmad is a wicked husband, is usually mispronounced due to influence from vernacular Arabic varieties as Ahmad Zawj Sharir. Yet, for the purposes of Arabic grammar and orthography, is treated as if it were not mispronounced and as if yet another word followed it, i.e., if adding any vowel marks, they must be added as if the pronunciation were Amadu Zajan Sharirun with a tanwin un at the end. So, it is correct to add an un tanwin sign on the final r, but actually pronouncing it would be a hypercorrection. Also, it is never correct to write a sukun on that r, even though in actual pronunciation it is an incorrect Arabic must be sukun. Of course, if the correct irab is a sukun, it may be optionally written. The sukun is also used for transliterating words into the Arabic script. The Persian word mask, mask from the English word mask, for example, might be written with a sukun above the s to signify that there is no vowel sound between that letter and the k. Topic: <laughs> Additional letters.
Topic: Regional variations. Some letters take a traditionally different form in specific regions. Topic: Non-native letters to standard Arabic. See also Arabic script hashtag special letters for languages other than Arabic. Some modified letters are used to represent non-native sounds of modern standard Arabic. These letters are used in transliterated names, loanwords and dialectal words. T is considered a native phoneme, allophone in some dialects, e.g. Kuwaiti and Iraqi dialects. Is considered a native phoneme in Levantine and North African dialects and as an allophone in others is considered a native phoneme, allophone in most modern Arabic dialects. <laughs> Used in languages other than Arabic <laughs> Numerals There are two main kinds of numerals used along with Arabic text, Western Arabic numerals and Eastern Arabic numerals. In most of present-day North Africa, the usual Western Arabic numerals are used. Like Western Arabic numerals, in Eastern Arabic numerals, the units are always rightmost, and the highest value leftmost. <laughs> Letters as numerals In addition, the Arabic alphabet can be used to represent numbers abjad numerals. This usage is based on the abjadi order of the alphabet. A Aleph is 1, BB is 2, J Jim is 3, and so on until YY. Y. <laughs> 10, K Kaf 20, L Lam 30, RR 200, GH Gayan. Equals 1000. This is sometimes used to produce chronograms. Equals Topic History Equals The Arabic alphabet can be traced back to the Nabataean alphabet used to write the Nabataean. The first known text in the Arabic alphabet is a late 4th century inscription from Jabal Ram 50 km east of Aqaba in Jordan, but the first dated one is a trilingual inscription at Zebed in Syria from 512. However, the epigraphic record is extremely sparse, with only five certainly pre-Islamic Arabic inscriptions surviving, though some others may be pre-Islamic. Later, dots were added above and below the letters to differentiate them. The Aramaic language had fewer phonemes than the Arabic, and some originally distinct Aramaic letters had become indistinguishable in shape, so that in the early writings 15 distinct letter shapes had to do duty for 28 sounds. Cf. The similarly ambiguous Pahlavi alphabet, the first surviving document that definitely uses these dots is also the first surviving Arabic papyrus, per 558, dated April 643, although they did not become a obligatory until much later. Important texts were and still are frequently memorized, especially in QUR and memorization, a practice which probably arose partially from a desire to avoid the great ambiguity of the script. Later still, vowel marks and the Hamza were introduced, beginning some time in the latter half of the 7th century, preceding the first invention of Syriac and Hebrew vocalization. Initially, this was done by a system of red dots, said to have been commissioned in the Umayyad era by Abu al-Azwad al-Duali a dot above equals a, a dot below. I, a dot on the line U, and doubled dots indicated nunation. However, this was cumbersome and easily confusable with the letter distinguishing dots, so about 100 years later, the modern system was adopted. The system was finalized around 786 by al-Farahidi. <laughs> <laughs> Arabic printing presses 
Although Napoleon Bonaparte generally receives credit for introducing the printing press to Egypt during his invasion of that country in 1798, and though he did indeed bring printing presses and Arabic script presses to print the French occupation's official newspaper Al Tanbiya, the Courier, printing in the Arabic language started several centuries earlier. In 1514, following Gutenberg's invention of the printing press in 1450, Gregorio de Gregori, a Venetian, published an entire prayer book in Arabic script. It was entitled Kitab Salat al Sawi and was intended for Eastern Christian communities. Between 1580 and 1586, type designer Robert Granjon designed Arabic typefaces for Cardinal Ferdinando de' Medici, and the Medici Press published many Christian prayer and scholarly Arabic texts in the late 16th century. Maronite monks at the Mar Kujai Monastery in Mount Lebanon published the first Arabic books to use movable type in the Middle East. The monks transliterated the Arabic language using Syriac script. A goldsmith like Gutenberg designed and implemented an Arabic script movable type printing press in the Middle East. The Greek Orthodox monk Abd Allah Zakir set up an Arabic printing press using movable type at the monastery of St. John at the town of Dor el Shuwayr in Mount Lebanon, the first homemade press in Lebanon using Arabic script. He personally cut the type molds and did the founding of the typeface. The first book came off his press in 1734. This press continued in use until 1899. <laughs> Computers The Arabic alphabet can be encoded using several character sets, including ISO 88596, Windows 1256 and Unicode see links in infobox above, latter thanks to the Arabic segment entries U plus 0600 to U plus 06FF. However, none of the sets indicates the form that each character should take in context. It is left to the rendering engine to select the proper glyph to display for each character. Each letter has a position independent encoding in Unicode, and the rendering software can infer the correct glyph form initial, medial, final or isolated from its joining context. That is the current recommendation. However, for compatibility with previous standards, the initial, medial, final and isolated forms can also be encoded separately. Unicode As of Unicode 11.0, the Arabic script is contained in the following blocks Arabic 0600 06 FF, 255 characters Arabic supplement 0750 077 F, 48 characters Arabic extended A 08 A 008 FF, 74 characters Arabic presentation forms A FB50 FDFF 611 characters Arabic presentation forms B FE70 FEFF 141 characters Rumi numeral symbols 10E60 to 10E7F 31 characters Indic Syriac numbers 1EC701ECBF 68 characters Arabic mathematical alphabetic symbols 1EE00 1 EEFF, 143 characters The basic Arabic range encodes the standard letters and diacritics but does not encode contextual forms U plus 0621 U plus 0652 being directly based on ISO 8859-6. It also includes the most common diacritics and Arabic indic digits. U plus 06D6 to U plus 06ED encode Quranic annotation signs such as end of ayah and Start of rub LHIZB. The Arabic supplement range encodes letter variants mostly used for writing African non -Arabic languages. The Arabic extended A range encodes additional Quranic annotations and letter variants used for various non Arabic languages. The Arabic presentation forms A range encodes contextual forms and ligatures of letter variants needed for Persian, Urdu, Sindhi, and Central Asian languages. The Arabic presentation forms B range encodes spacing forms of Arabic diacritics, and more contextual letter forms. The Arabic mathematical alphabetical symbols block encodes characters used in Arabic mathematical expressions. See also the notes of the section on modified letters. <laughs> <laughs> Keyboards 
Keyboards designed for different nations have different layouts so proficiency in one style of keyboard, such as Iraq's, does not transfer to proficiency in another, such as Saudi Arabia's. Differences can include the location of non-alphabetic characters. All Arabic keyboards allow typing Roman characters, e.g., for the URL in a web browser. Thus, each Arabic keyboard has both Arabic and Roman characters marked on the keys. Usually the Roman characters of an Arabic keyboard conform to the QWERTY layout, but in North Africa, where French is the most common language typed using the Roman characters, the Arabic keyboards are A-Z-E-R-T-Y. To encode a particular written form of a character, there are extra code points provided in Unicode which can be used to express the exact written form desired. The range Arabic presentation forms A U plus FB50 to U plus FDFF contain ligatures while the range Arabic presentation forms B U plus FA70 to U plus FF contains the positional variants. These effects are better achieved in Unicode by using the zero-width joiner and non-joiner, as these presentation forms are deprecated in Unicode, and should generally only be used within the internals of text rendering software, when using Unicode as an intermediate form for conversion between character encodings, or for backwards compatibility with implementations that rely on the hard coding of glyph forms. Finally, the Unicode encoding of Arabic is in logical order, that is, the characters are entered, and stored in computer memory, in the order that they are written and pronounced without worrying about the direction in which they will be displayed on paper or on the screen. Again, it is left to the rendering engine to present the characters in the correct direction, using Unicode's bi-directional text features. In this regard, if the Arabic words on this page are written left to right, it is an indication that the Unicode rendering engine used to display them is out of date. There are competing online tools, e.g., Yamli Editor, which allow entry of Arabic letters without having Arabic support installed on a PC, and without knowledge of the layout of the Arabic keyboard. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Handwriting recognition. The first software program of its kind in the world that identifies Arabic handwriting in real time was developed by researchers at Ben Gurion University BGU. The prototype enables the user to write Arabic words by hand on an electronic screen, which then analyzes the text and translates it into printed Arabic letters in a thousandth of a second. The error rate is less than 3%, according to Dr. Jihad El Sana, from BGU's Department of Computer Sciences, who developed the system along with master's degree student Fadi Biadzi. <laughs> See also